Hello, thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is Tomito Pepagumi. I am your regular host on this platform. And uh, the topic I would like us to look at today is that you watch out for these four things in this new year. It's a new year, the year is still fresh. It's a new year, it's a year of wonders, a year of good and precious promises of the Lord for his children. I don't know the prophecies i don't know what you've heard at the beginning of the year i don't want us to create unnecessary panic or fear for ourselves as the year begins one thing we know is that god has given us authority over all things and then the bible says that there is power in our tongue so whatever we confess whatever we believe that will be ours in this year is what we will possess that is that whatever a man confesses with his mouth he shall possess so if we believe that this year is a year of abundance is a year of victory is a year of you know the goodness and the manifestation of the power and the glory of god in your life and in your family so shall it be for you so i don't want us to begin to panic over any prophecies you know a lot of ministers at the beginning of the year prophesy a lot of prophecies coming at least not for one to see they are liars or whatever but the thing is the bible says in the book of psalm 91 that a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand at our, at our right hand it shall not come near us we will behold all these things but it will not be our own portion in jesus name so for us to be able to enjoy every good thing that the lord have for us this year there are these four things that the spirit of the lord has laid in my hand that i should share with you that we should watch out for and as we avoid these things and any other thing that the lord convict us of or the spirit of god of god you know we have the spirit of god in our heart to tell us how to live for god so i'll share these four things with you and i pray that the spirit of god will expand the word you know we give the word life we give it meaning in the ears of every hearer in jesus name the first thing on our list is murmuring 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 can you know we can liken to the grumbling complaining and all that and this is one thing that the lord detests god hates murmurers he does not like it in any source. That is not to say that we condone things that are not right. Maybe we will find ourselves in environments or maybe circumstances that are not pleasant to us. But you know, as believers, as children of God, we should have better understanding of dealing with God. We should have better understanding of you know handling situations and circumstances. In this world, the Bible says that we have tribulation. In this world, challenges will come. And mind you, if there are no challenges, you and I, we will become lazy. We will become, you know, you know, we will become negligent. We will become self, you know, reliant. We will become self, you know, we will rely, we will resort to self-maintenance. We will believe that we no longer need God. So for us to always remember at every point in time or the other that we need God. God allows. It's not as if God is a good thing. He's a good God. He does not, you know, he does not bring bad things into the life of his children. But God might allow some things. At times to stretch our feet. At times, you know, to draw us closer. At times to, to you know, to, to bring us to our knees so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to seek the face of God. God always wants to hear our voice. And many of us, you know, the more God blesses us, we forget about God. Even to pray become make you know becomes kind of difficult. I pray that God, you know, will not get to that level in our Christian race this year in Jesus' name. Hey, hey, and our out of all the abundance that we are believing the Lord for revival, spiritual revival, you know, prayer our prayer life will receive fresh fire from above in Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. So we will look into the scripture. What does the Bible say? You know, about murmuring. There is no other example that we can use, you know, to, to, to talk about murmuring except for the story of the children of Israel. You know, children of Israel, I believe you know your Bible very well. If you go back to the story where they were in bondage, the Bible recorded that they spent 430 years in bondage in captivity. That is a very long time. That is, a, you know, it was a very long time. But in the multitude of God's mercy, it was their sin, it was their rebellion and all that that put them there. But God in his mercy, when they cry out to the Lord, God answered them, you know, he sent the deliverer. He sent Moses. To deliver them so that is to tell us that and even if it is our sin any problem we find ourselves if it is a result of our sin or whatever that put us there because god is merciful if we cry out to him instead of us to be running away from god and be murmuring and be fighting where people will tell you they are angry with god you know they will tell you they are not going to church anymore they don't want to pray anymore they don't want to believe anymore they don't want to be a christian anymore whether you believe or not that doesn't stop god from being god god will always be god he changed not. That is that he remained the same forevermore. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you say you are not going to serve God, you know how many people have just given their life to Jesus today that just accepted the faith. So you not serving God will not stop God from being God. So it is better for us to humble ourselves before our Maker and amend our ways wherever we are going wrong. So what what does the Bible say is concerning 
you know, murmuring in the scripture. You know, when we look at the scripture, the Bible recorded that 13 different times the children of Israel they murmured against Moses and Aaron, their leader. Indirectly, they are murmuring against God, and God was displeased with them. I pray that this year God will not be displeased with any one of us in Jesus' name. Exodus 15 24 and it says, And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? The people murmured against Moses. The people we're talking about, these are not thousands of people. We have grown men, we have grown women, we have teenagers, we have children. We have... So, is it that they don't know how? God, these are the people that have enjoyed manifold blessings of God, wonderful mercies of God, deliverance, great deliverance from the land of bondage. They were just coming out of Egypt. God has just delivered them from captivity and He has a plan for them. He was taking them to the promised land. But because these are rebellious people, these are people, and we, we too, we can be like that sometimes. We forget the past blessings of God. We forget the past blessings of God. I pray that God will give us the extensive acts. We'll be able to remember. Right? It's like count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you. It's a song. You know, count your, count your many blessings, name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. If you don't have a mind of gratitude, you don't have a heart that you know that is always glorifying God. It will make us to forget what the Lord has done in the past. His past blessings and mercies and deliverance and favor and help. Then we begin to look at you know our present situation as if if God doesn't do this now, then that means He's no longer God. God is God, and He will forever be God. Amen. Did I hear you say Amen? God will forever be God. That is the truth. So whatever we are going through now should not make us begin to complain and begin to murmur, even against our leadership. A lot of us, you know, our nations, depending on where we come from, especially you know all these third world you know nations, developing nations, African and all that. We begin to complain about our leadership. That is not to say we don't have bad leaders. But the Bible tells us that we should pray for those in authority. The more we pray for them, it will make their job easier and it will make life easier for us also that they are governing. That is the truth. We have to pray for them, cursing them, murmuring against them, you know, complaining about them, saying all sorts of evil, saying all, passing all sorts of evil comments about them. It will be making life more difficult. It can bring about more confusion into their life. It can bring about, you know, we, they need the support of the people they are leading. That is the truth. A leader is just a human being. Many of us, we love to complain. And if we, if we want to be honest with ourselves, many of us that are complaining in our own little corner, many of us were even doing worse than the leaders we are complaining about. At your place of work, how do you deal with your, 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 employ, your employees? How do you deal with them? At, your, at where you're working, maybe at your business point, your business center, or your shop, or whatever they, you're doing. How are your affairs? Are you saying that you are better than your, your, your overall leader, maybe your president or whatever? So let us be mindful. Instead of complaining, if we see things that are not palatable, if we see things that we don't like, there are better ways, there are matured ways of doing handling things so that we will not covet, we will not invite the hunger of God in our life. And I pray that the hunger and the judgment of God will not come upon us in Jesus because that's what happened to the children of Israel. If we look at another scripture, that is exactly what happened to these people. They complained and murmured they needed water. The, the, the wisest thing they could have done is to go to their leader. We are, we are thirsty, we need water. And as a leader, the leader now knows, they will now know how to approach the matter. If you could not provide water for them physically, then it is his responsibility to now cry out to God as a leader. Say, God, you are the one that asked me to lead these people. They need, what, they need water. What do, what do I do? And God will provide a solution. And I pray that as we pray for our leaders, and now we pray also for ourselves in our families, you know, in our places or wherever we find ourselves, in our institutions of learning, wherever we find ourselves, God will give us wisdom. And as we pray, God will bring about solution to our problems in Jesus' name. You know, when we read on, when we look at the same book of Exodus 16 too, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Seven, and in the morning, then ye shall see, that's Moses speaking to the assembly now, and, and in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? They murmur against their leadership, they murmur against God directly, indirectly. Because they say, if we, if we look at it, they said, and the children of Israel in verse 3, and the children of Israel said unto them, would, would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt? When we sat by the flesh pots, are they saying that all the suffering, everything God delivered them from, God made mistake by delivering them? I pray that God will have mercy upon us. We will not act like this. 
This is what God is telling us this year that we should learn to do things properly. We should learn to behave properly. We should learn to approach matters in you know in a wise manner. God will give us godly wisdom to be able to approach situations in our life in a way that God will be glorified in Jesus' name. How will God be so wicked? Deliver them so those part from bondage, from one journey to the other, from different stages, you know. I will now bring them to the wilderness to come and allow them to die of water. That's not the kind of God we are serving. You know, you expect the children of Israel to know better. Many of us do we know better. The way we, you know, the way we relate with God, do we know better? Do we always get angry when we are expecting things and things that look as if it's not forthcoming? Indirectly, we are telling God, say, God, I'm serving you because of this need. And if this need is not met, then definitely I no longer want to serve you. I'm serving you because of your hand. I'm not serving you because of your heart. We should learn to seek the heart of God. And the more we seek God, that is that we should seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be handed on to us. I pray that God will give us wisdom. This year, we will seek the Lord. And as we seek the Lord, his glory will be revealed in our lives and in our situations and circumstances. Even in our nation, the glory of the Lord will be revealed in Jesus' name. And as a result, like I said, these people, they kept on murmuring and murmuring at every different point in time. God was not pleased. And what, what was the result of that? So God became angry with them. God was angry with them. I read from Numbers chapter 14 and see God's reaction towards these people. God is had enough of them. I pray that God will not have enough of us in Jesus' name. Numbers 14, 27 to 28. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, seeth the Lord, as he has spoken in my ear, so will I do to you. These people they said that God, God wanted them to come and die in the wilderness. And God said, Because you kept on saying that I want you to die in the wilderness, I want you to die in the wilderness. And this is not my intention for you. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the thoughts I have concerning you. They are of good and not of evil. God had good plans and had good thoughts. But if what we are confessing all the time is negative, Eh? Will this sickness kill me? Will this say no? Will this will problem ever be resolved? Will this children give me peace? This children, instead, we should be confessing positive. This children, they are, they are, you know, God has given them their blessing from the Lord. They will grant me peace. They will be taught of the Lord. This sickness will be healed. Because the Bible says that the desire of God is for me in the, in the book of Jude. is that God wants me to prosper body, spirit, and soul. The plan of God is for us. For us is good. So all this plan is what we have to be taking back to God in time of difficulty. We shouldn't be confessing negativity with our mouth. Bible says that there is power of life and death in our mouth. So but, but Bible says that God said, because you have said these things in my head, so will I do. And the judgment of God came upon them. In fact, all the generation, all the older generation, they did not enter into the promised land. With all their suffering, with all their wanderings for over 40 years, they did not enter. Only the little issues should have moved there. Enter. I pray that we will not labor in vain in Jesus' name. Everything that we have labored for in our journey, we will live to enjoy it in Jesus. And the only way we can enjoy it, God is telling us that we should be careful. We should not cultivate the habit of murmuring this year. Murmuring should be far away from us. And I pray that God will help us. We don't murmur. And we don't allow people that murmur to hang around us. It's very important also because you know, our attitude is contagious. Our lifestyle is contagious. The way we live our life, the way other people are living, Directly or indirectly can affect our attitude also. We don't allow murmurs and all so that they will not have a hinder the plan of God for our life this year in Jesus' name. So instead of murmuring, let's just look at a story in the Bible. You know, somebody that God gave wisdom. This is a man of wisdom, a hard problem. Just like somebody will be saying that what I'm going through, uh, you don't understand, Sister Tokwe. Sister Timmy Tokwe, you don't understand what I'm going through. If you really understand what I'm going through, you will understand the reason why I'm complaining. We don't need to complain. The Bible says that we should not complain. This is not the year of complaining. This is the year of manifestation of God's promise. So instead of complaining, let us see what happened. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 10, it tells us the story of Jabez. What happened? And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. This guy was born. He was given a name of Saul. Jabez did not give a give it to himself. He did not determine the family we went into. The mother, based on the circumstances surrounding, you know, the birth of Jabez, he was born in sorrow. He gave Jabez, which interpreted the child of sorrow. I pray that our name. We know we not bring about sorrow, we not bring about negativity into our life. That's why as parents also, this is a lesson for us that we should be mindful of the name we give our children. What we're going through, our present circumstances, 
does not determine where we are ending in the future. We might be going through difficulties at the moment, but we should keep our eyes on God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we don't let the present circumstances we are in at the moment determine our future. We don't speak death into our future, we speak life. This mother, the mother of Jabez, gave him a name of sorrow, and this name affected Jabez. He, came, he became a man, he is a grown man, and he looked at his life. He wasn't happy what is going on around him. This man did not go to the parent and begin to fight the parents. If he's you know some people, some rebellious children, they will go to the parent and they can call the mother, mother or the parents, you know, all sorts of evil names. You're a witch, you're a wizard, you're this, you're wicked. How could you do this to me? So you are the brain behind my problem. You are the one causing all the problem in my life. No, Gabish knew better. He went back to his maker. He went back to the, you know, to the, the you know, to the manufacturer of his soul. He went back to his Lord. You know that the mother might not be able to help, but there's somebody that can help. Jabesh went back to God, and lo and behold, God answered his prayer. The Bible says that God blessed him indeed, and I pray that God will bless you. God will bless me. God will bless us indeed this year in Jesus' name. So instead of Momoe, we should know Momoe. We follow the approach of Jabesh in any situation. We go on our knees and go to God in prayer. Talk to me, Lord. Speak to him. Say, God, I'm not happy with what is happening around me. I know you have good plans for me, but everything I'm seeing around me is not good. Lord, Prove yourself in my life that even heathens will not look at me and they ask me where the God I'm serving. And as we trust God, as we do all these things, He will do what He has promised to do in our lives in Jesus' name. And also, before I leave that point, what was the book of Philippians told us? Philippians told us something. Philippians chapter 4. I read from verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And four says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say, rejoice. So let us cultivate the habit of thanksgiving. Rejoicing. You can't be sad and be rejoicing at the same time. You can't be sorrowful and be happy at the same time. You know, we have to choose one. The same energy we use, you know, to be sorrowful, to be complaining, to be depressed and all that. It's the same energy we need to just, you know, play some, you know, wonderful gospel music and just rejoice in the presence of God. Dance, dance. Even Satan will be confused. Uh, the more I bring problem into the life of this person, the more rejoicing. Satan will be confused, and at the end of the day, he doesn't have a choice. He will pack his load and he will pack his luggage and leave your life alone, because he knows that this one doesn't have time for me, and he will go somewhere else. And I pray that you rejoice in the presence of God, as you make your request known unto God through thanksgiving, as you humbly come before your Maker to ask for His mercy and seek for His face. The Lord will manifest, it will come true, and it will be glorified in your life this year in Jesus' name. And the second point that the Lord is warning us against is doubt. We should not doubt God. We should not doubt God, we should not doubt the servant, and we should not doubt the word of God, most especially. Because that is that the word God in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the God Himself was with was God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word itself was God. So God himself is his word. So we should not take the word of God, you know, with levity and begin to think that, is it not the Bible? I know that one already. Somebody, you're hearing the word of God, the prophecy is coming to you from a sincere servant of God. Because the Bible says we should test our spirit and, and know that they are of God. You know, not everybody that pray that we can say amen to. That is, that, that's my principle. I don't just say amen. I test every spirit and know that yes, this spirit is of God. And when you know that you are, you know, you, you are under the influence, under the anointing of servant of God, and you are speaking the word of God, or maybe you yourself you are reading the Bible, you're reading the Bible, and the word of God is impressing some point into your heart, and God is you know telling you something about this word. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. It's very dangerous. I read from 2 Kings chapter 7, from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Don't see the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of, of fine flour be sold for a shekel, shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king laid answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make widows in heaven, hmm, might this thing be? And he said, Behold. Thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. I pray that this will not be your testimony, and this will not be my testimony. This year in Jesus' name. I don't know whether you are watching this video, and you are saying, what is he talking about? Who is she? 
This is the word of the Lord coming to you directly from the throne of grace that this year is the year of God's manifestation. So it's up to you whether you believe it or not. If you believe the word of God, you will prosper. If you believe his power, you will be established. And I pray that this year, you and I, we shall prosper in the things that will bring honor to God and you will be established to the glory of his name in Jesus' name. So this man doubted Elisha. He said, this time tomorrow, there will be an abundance in the land. And truly, God confirmed this word. But because this man, they said, he's a Lord, but he lack discipline. He lack, you know, self-control. He doubted the word of God. And truly, what does the Bible recorded concerning the incidents? This promise was actually fulfilled. When we read in the same chapter 7, verse 17, he said, And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. Because already there was abundance. People were rushing to go and have, you know, to go and have the home portion of the abundance that the God has promised the day before. So they said, and the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. This man that doubted Elisha died in the midst of abundance. He was never a particular. I pray that this will not be your portion. You will not die. Even at the, you know, at, the, you know, at the manifestation, at the onset of the manifestation of the promise of God in Jesus, name, you will live to witness and you will live to be a partaker of the glory of God this year in Jesus' name. You will not just hear of it, you will be a partake of it in Jesus' name. And, and the people trod upon him in the gate and he died, as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. He died. He was never a partaker of it. I pray that God will have mercy on us. So we need to be very careful. Don't doubt the word of God. If a prophecy comes, if for any reason you don't believe it, just be quiet. Things, there are some things you don't understand. Notice that, they, you know, a carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. You can say that I'm a Christian, I'm not carnal. Well, when you hear a prophecy, when you hear something that you think is too good to be real, it's better for you to keep quiet. Because, notice that God said it. There's a saying that God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. If God says something and you can believe it, it is settled. And I pray that every of God's promises in your life and in my life this year shall be settled in Jesus' name. So instead of doubting, let's learn to keep our mouth quiet. It's better. We'll be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. And even we don't even think about it because God knows the intention of our hearts. He's a discerner. That is why he's a discerner. God is a discerner of thoughts. He knows what is going on in our hearts. So don't even don't don't ent entertain the thoughts in your heart. Can this thing be? That is doubt. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. So we can't please God without faith. We need faith. Even if it's as tiny as a mustard seed this year. And I pray that God will give us such that kind of faith that you need and I need to enter into the promise of God this year, the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. I read from 2 Chronicles 20, 20. What does it have to say? And it says, I read the latter part of it. It said, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in the Lord. Believe his word. This is the word of God. This is the scripture. This is God himself. John 1, 1. It is God. This is the mind of God. Filled with the spirit of God. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Don't entertain doubt this year. If God has said something, that is that God is not a man that he will lie. Neither is he a son of man that he will repent. As he said it and don't do it, God is faithful and he is able. If he's done it before, he will do it again. He's not a man that he will lie. Neither is he a son of man that he will repent. And if he's done it in the life of somebody else, that God is no respecter of persons. If you've done it for somebody else, if you've done it in the life of brother A or sister B or you know, Uncle Z or whatever, he will do it in your life and he will do it in my life in Jesus' name. God does not respect persons. All he's looking for is faith. The faith that is tiny or strong enough, no matter how tiny it is, to draw his hand to invite his blessing. God is looking for it and he will find it in you and I this year in Jesus' name. The number three point or thing that we should watch out for is distraction. Distraction. I once heard the saying that if Satan could not stop somebody, it would distract the person. I pray that you will not be distracted of Satan this year in Jesus' name. If Satan have tried everything to stop somebody, 
they know that this one is unstoppable. The next attempt is to distract the person. And you know what distraction is? It's to make somebody to lose focus from things that are important, things that are meditative, things that are need needful. Satan tries to stop. And I pray that we, you and I, will be unstoppable for him this year in Jesus' name. So God is saying that we should avoid distraction this year. It could come in any form. That's why we need to be sensitive, you know, to things that are happening around us, things that are happening around us. Be sensitive and watch out. If God has laid any important thing, anything that you have make up your mind to do this year, this factor could come through any form. It could come through anybody at your place of work. You get to work, you want to work. Somebody is always there to gossip. Somebody is always there to distract. Somebody is there, always there to, you know, to not to mind you. You know, you are, they are employed to work. They could even be Christians. It is not possible for you to be busy working and be busy be gossiping at the same time. It's not possible for you. In fact, for people at work, you will see them on the internet and they are at work. It is wrong. Internet itself is, is you know, it's, it has its own measure of distraction. That is the truth. We don't learn how to use it well. That's the truth. Anything whatsoever. It could even be the family when you are ready to do something very important, something that is positive. And at that point, somebody is. But I remember there was a time, you know, a lady. Each time I realized I want to pray, that is exactly the time the, the phone, the, this phone call will come in. She's an elderly lady. No, first time, second time, third time. It became like that. I said to myself, I'm not saying this lady is bad or she's evil or anything, but something told me that why, why? This is distraction. So, what I normally do is that anytime I kneel down to pray, I put my phone on silent, on airplane mode. And I take the phone far away from me. If she calls, I wouldn't see it. I won't even know whether she's calling anyway. And at my convenient time, I'll call back. So we should always make sure we avoid distraction at every stage of our life. In our prayer life, we don't allow the devil to distract us. You know, in our business, we don't allow this devil to distract us. We look uh, at Nehemiah 2. Nehemiah 2, verse 10. And 19, what does the Bible tell us there concerning the story of Nehemiah? Nehemiah, this is a man that realizes that there was a problem. Nehemiah realized this, there's a problem in Israel, in Jerusalem. And he decided, Nehemiah realizes there's a problem. The wall of Jerusalem has been broken down. There was a problem. And he decided, he took it upon himself that I'm going to do something about it. It became a burden. The things that concern the children of God concern this man. Verse 10. And it says, When Sambalat the Haronite and Tobiah the servant, the Hamonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. 19. But when Sambalat the Haronite and Tobiah the servant and Hamonite, the Hamonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, the Lord also scorned. And despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, no right, no memorial in Jerusalem. This man decided to do things, you know, that will promote the welfare of the children of God, of the Israelites. Sambalat's and to buy it, they decided to cause destruction. They saw the problem, they didn't do anything about it. In every nation, there is a problem. So it's not about for us to, it's good to look for problems, to find out what, what are the problems, prevailing problems at home, in our places of work in our nation. But it is good enough to find, but it's not good enough to leave the problem like that. If you cannot find the solution or to look for a way out, it is better to leave it there. Instead of you to find it, don't do anything about it. And you see somebody else that is trying to do it. Then you become grievous. You become sad. You become hungry. Why them? Why him all the time? So that people can say he's the one. She's the one that is always doing it. If you cannot do it, leave somebody else to do the right thing. Nehemiah decided to take it upon himself. Sambalat and Tobiah, they decided to distract this man. But he will not have it. Nehemiah will not have it. And this year, I encourage this also. Do not allow any Sambalat and Tobiah to distract you. They love them to scorn. What is it that you are doing when they decide to do even to build the wall? 
What is it that you people are doing? I pray that God will give us wisdom and the understanding to be able to avoid every distractors this year in Jesus' name. So that every good thing we have set our hands upon to do, our hand will finish it in Jesus' name. In Nehemiah 6, verse 3, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, If I, it, it, if I read from one, it says that now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem the Herbian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no bridge left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, then Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain of one or no. But they thought to do me mischief. Nehemiah was a nice man. He has built the wall. That is just left for him to fix the gates of the wall. So everything they were doing is just to stop this man. And if I can't stop you, I will distract you from finishing. I pray that the devil and his courts, they will not be able to stop you and I this year from fulfilling every of God's plans and purpose for our life in Jesus' name. And verse 3, And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease which I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Can you imagine? They kept on pestering uh, Nehemiah that he's not going to have it. They kept on doing the will of God. He said, No, I'm not coming. I know your intention. I know your plan. We need to be wise. That is that we should be, you know, we should be gentle as though, but we should be wise as serpent also. We should be wise. And I pray that God will give us wisdom to prevail over every work of darkness this year in Jesus' name. And verse 9 says, for they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen our hands. Nehemiah prayed, Strengthen our hands. Me and my team, people that are supporting me, strengthen our hands. This year, the Lord will strengthen your hands. Every good thing you have set your hands upon to do, every good thing I've set my hands upon to do also, every good thing the Lord has laid in my hand, every will strengthen our hands this year in Jesus' name. We will not be afraid. Because Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. So we will not be afraid this year. We will pursue and we will recover all. Every good thing that the enemy has stolen, even in the past, this year we will recover all in Jesus' name. We will not be distracted. God will make us unstoppable in the mighty name of Jesus. Read the Nehemiah 4 9. Before I leave that point, he said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto, unto our God. And set a watch against them day and night because of them. So they keep a watch so that as we are walking, they will not allow the distractors to come and hinder them. I read from verse 16. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the habigeons. And the Habibians and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which builded on the wall, and they that bear built bobbins with those that laid it, everyone with one of his hands wrought in the wall, and with the other hand held the weapon. For the builders, everyone had a sword guided by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by him. They guided themselves, they were prepared for the work. Let us be prepared. Let us be, you know, fully hammered. And so that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. I pray that God will help us. We will not be ignorant. Devil will not prevail over us. May you have prevail. We shall prevail this year in Jesus' name. We shall prevail. Everything we have started, we will finish it. Every good thing our hands have started this year. We will, by the, in fact, before we get to the half of the year, there shall be glorious completion beyond our own imagination. And it will be to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And lastly, the first point, or the first thing we should walk, watch out for, is bad company. Bad company. I will say that uh, iron sharpened iron. A friend sharpened the countenance of his friend. Also, evil sharpened evil. So, if we are sharpening one another, what are we sharpening one another for? Don't be a partaker of somebody else's evil. Stay away from people that you know that this one has evil mission, has evil intention. Some people, they are troublesome. Some people, they stand for nothing than evil. I pray that we will not be seen as us camp in Jesus' name. It so amazes me when we call ourselves children. There's a saying that you show me your friend and I know who you are. 
how can I say I'm a child of God? I am born again and I'm sanctified by the Holy Spirit. You know, I am living for God. And I will call a sinner my best friend. It, it is never so. The Bible says that can two work together except they be agree. And we should not be an unequally yoke. You know, with an unbeliever. So we must avoid with everything within us. If we want to enjoy the blessings of God this year, we must avoid bad company. If we read from 1 Thessalonians 5.22, what does the Bible have to say concerning this? 1 Thessalonians 5.22. He says, abstain from all appearances of evil. All appearances. Maybe it's not even evil, but it looks like evil. There's an iota, there's a, you know, there's a, there are traces of evil in something. Stay away from it. Don't wait to confirm whether it's evil or not. Because if you wait to confirm whether it's evil or not, it might be too late for you to escape. I feel that we will not be, you know, we will not be entrapped by the snare of the enemy this evening in Jesus' name. Let us stay away from evil and from evil doers. Do not be a partaker of somebody else's evil. Maybe you're saying that I don't do evil, but what about the people you are moving around with? You're a Christian, a married man, a married woman, a married man. You go about with, you know, unbelieving friends. You leave your place of work instead of you to go home with you, to meet your family. Your hand in money, you go to, to, you know, to places. You'll be drinking and, you know, carrying ladies and just wasting away your resources and wasting away your virtues. Dining with the devil. And the Bible tells you that marriage is honorable and a bed on the fault. But the adulterers, God will judge. If you defy your bed, if you defy your bed, God will judge you. Whether you're a man or a woman, God will judge you. Stay away from trouble. If you work for your money, use it wisely to the glory of God. God gave you the energy to do that work. And for ladies also, your friends, they are jumping from one party to the other. In fact, some people, if there's no party to go to, they will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will make a party. They will make it happen. The kind of friendship they have, one weekend cannot pass without them organizing party or attending one party. If they realize that, oh, it's been a week or it's been two weeks, there's no party. Ah, girls or ladies, there's no party. What's happening? Somebody had to come up with something. They will see something to celebrate so that they can leave their home, leave their family. And at the end of the day, why they are away? They're always busy. Busy. You know, working on the family. I feel that we will not, we will not create a loophole for the enemy to gain access to our home and our family in Jesus' name. We will not die with the devil. Stay away from trouble. Stay away from evil. Stay away from heavy appearances of evil this year. And the grace to do so, the Lord will grant unto you and I in Jesus' name. I read from Proverbs 6. Quickly. Proverbs 6, verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not get not be burned? Can one go upon all coals and his feet not burn? So he that goeth in his neighbor's house, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Yes, yes, you cannot take fire into your bosom and your fire will not get burnt. You cannot die with the devil and go scot free. Don't do it. Stay away from evil, stay away from bad complaint. Don't say, I'm a matured man, you know, I can handle it. I'm a matured lady, I can take care of myself. You can't take care of yourself. Stay away from appearances of evil. Because when the trouble comes, when the trouble comes, you will say, you might pray. But <laughs> what about the consequence? God have mercy on you, truly. But what about, there are some consequences that you have to live with. Be careful. So that when the consequences comes, you will not have yourself to blame. And also, your family. What about the innocent children that you left up behind at home? They are watching you. You are laying an example for them. Be careful. And I pray that God will deliver you from every evil complaint, from every evil you know, association. The Lord will bring deliverance unto us this year in Jesus' name. So that every of our dealings, every of our interaction, every of our relationship, God will be honored through them in Jesus' name. First Corinthians, I read from First Corinthians chapter 15. What does it say? It says, bad communication corrupts good manner. Even the things that come out of your mouth, wash it this year. Make sure that your words does not promote evil. Don't give consent to evil. You see people doing evil. They, you know, you are quiet. You are not going to stay away from them. They are quiet. He said, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 
you feel so comfortable in the midst of evildoers, in the midst of corrupt minded people, at your place of work, people see all sorts of filthy things, all sorts of evil things, all sorts of things that you cannot even imagine that can come out of, you know, from the mouth of people. You sit down there, you are comfortable, you are smiling, you are giving consent. If the judgment of God is to come there and then, you will be a part of it. I feel that you will not be a part of God's judgment in Jesus' name. Or you are watching TV, you saw, you see something that you know that this does not glorify God. You see nudity, you see all sorts of nakedness, all sorts of evil being portrayed and you feel comfortable. Be careful. God wants us to stay away from evil. In our communication, in our conduct, in our dealings, in our relationship, God wants to stay away from evil this year. So that every good thing the Lord has promised, we shall be a part of it in Jesus' name. And lastly, I read from Psalm 1 1. Psalm 1 1. This is the you know, this is the promise of God for us. If we can avoid these things, if we can avoid murmuring, if we can avoid doubting, if we can avoid you know distraction, and if we can avoid evil company. What does the Bible tell us? Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. But are like the shelf which the wind driveth away. The wind will not drive, drive you, and you will lead the same in Jesus' name. So I pray that the blessings of God will locate you and I. We run after us. We will not continue to run again. We will not run after the blessings of God. Said, seek first the kingdom of God. Very important. And his righteousness. If we seek the righteousness of God, if we live our life to honor God, <laughs> his blessings will begin to run after us, begin to overtake us. And that will be our testimony this year in Jesus' name. Watching me, and you are not born again. You might be thinking, what's she talking about? I don't even understand what she's talking about. It might not have meaning to you because that is that, you know, a carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. You are carnal. You are the flesh. So you can't understand everything I'm talking about. And you don't even have the power to stay away, to do, to not to, to, not to do these things you're talking about sins. So if you know that you're not born again and you're watching me, why not? Why not just accept that you're a sinner? Ask God to come into your life. Ask Him to forgive you of your sin. And tell, tell Him to come into your life and be the Lord of your life and give you the grace to sin no more. The grace of God, that we say that it appeared unto all men, telling us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly flesh and we should live soberly and godly in this present world. And I pray that the grace for you to live soberly, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. If you are hearing me, if you are watching me, and you want to give your life to Jesus, if you don't mind, let us pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, you say the prayer after me. Lord, I thank you for my life. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to give my life to you. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Come into my life and be the Lord of my life. And the grace from today to sin no more, I receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you for forgiving me my sins. And thank you for coming into my life. Reign in me so that when you shall come, I will reign with you in glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much if I just pray that prayer. That means you're born again. You are born again. You have been adopted into this, the family of the body of Christ. Congratulations. Do yourself a favor. Find yourself. I pray that the Spirit of God will lead you to a Bible-believing church where the Word of God is preached and is taught undiluted. Where they will not make you comfortable, you know, without the Word of God. Find yourself. And I pray that the Spirit of God will lead you to a place. It's not for me to tell you where you go and worship. But I pray that the Spirit of God will lead you to a rightful place where you will be able to know more of the Word of God. And make it a date also to join me regularly on this platform. And the Lord lead and teach us in his word and lead us in his will in jesus name thank you very much if you have not subscribed to this channel please subscribe remember to click the notification button so that you will know whenever i upload a new video thank you for joining me god bless you and i pray that everything that you have you know learned today of the word of god the grace to be able to do god 
the will of God this year, the Lord will grant unto us in Jesus' name. The grace to be able to do everything God is expecting of us. The grace will be sufficient for you and I in Jesus' name. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. God bless you. Bye.